students, today we're going to look at another example of a one-two disconnection. And you will see that in this example we have a little bit more complex, uh, a little bit more uh, work to do in a complex structure where we have to disconnect uh, a particular group out of a particular molecule. And you'll see this in one of your examples in the textbook. So let's have a look at this. So the example that we're going to use has this particular structure. It's nitrogen joined to a carbonyl group joined to an oxygen in a five-membered ring. Another amino group joined to that nitrogen atom. And on this particular carbon, we have a morpholine group joined to it. So we have that particular structure that we're going to try to do a retrosynthetic analysis on. <coughs> So let's see what steps do we need to follow. So immediately what we do is look for the heteroatoms and you see the many heteroatoms in this particular molecule. Uh, you've got the nitrogen of the amino group here, but if you look at this group as a whole, you will see that this is a hydrazine uh, moiety. You have a carbonyl group here, you have an oxygen there, then a nitrogen and an oxygen. Looking at the morpholine structure, I wouldn't really want to um, break this down any further since morpholine is readily available and if I could actually um, fragment this molecule along here and get this morpholine as a silicon that would be quite suitable. So what I'm going to do is look at the other two uh, heteroatoms, oxygen and nitrogen <coughs> and this carbamate moiety here can be broken down further. And in order to do that, we have to disconnect next to the nitrogen and we can disconnect next to the oxygen at the same time because the attack of both these nucleophiles onto the carbon atom of the carbonyl uh, will lead to this carbonate structure. Um, so we have disconnection to a carbonyl group and in order to get both nucleophiles to attack at that particular carbon, we need two healing groups attached to the carbonyl carbon. And that gives you this dimethyl carbonate structure that you have here. And since we broke both the bonds of the NC and the OC bonds to the, the carbonyl group, we can draw the other part of the molecule, <coughs> which looks something like this. And you'll see that once I draw this particular molecule, we've got something that we can actually recognize. So let me just take here, NH. And we can actually recognize a 1-2 di-x disconnection. Now at this point you have a 1-2 di-x disconnection here. You also have another 1-2 di-x disconnection here. I'll call that maybe 2 prime. Um, and the question is where to disconnect either between that nitrogen and this carbon, carbon 2, this nitrogen and carbon carbon 2 prime. Um, I would rather choose this first because remember our, one of our aims is to disconnect the most reactive parts of the molecule <coughs> first. So if I had to look at the two because of this amino group that we have in here this would make this hydrazine moiety much more reactive than this morpholine moiety. So I would choose to disconnect that first 
and looking at that particular disconnection we get hydrazine as one of the synthons or synthetic equivalents and then that would leave carbon num number one and carbon number two forming an epoxide and the rest of the molecule can be drawn in with the morpholine structure in it. And this, if you look at this structure carefully, we, we've done an example like this, that this can be broken down into epichlorohydrin and morpholine. So that shows you a systematic disconnection um, of this particular structure, disconnecting it firstly at the carbamate group, um, recognizing that once we disconnected next to the two heteroatoms on the carbamate, we had a 1-2 disconnection that we could perform either on that side or that side. We chose that side because of the more reactive hydrazine. The resultant epoxide was able to um, proceed via epichlorohydrin. <coughs> and let's just take a minute to look at the synthesis. We would react morpholine with epichlorohydrin. And on doing that, you would form your first intermediate. And remember, your first intermediate has three carbon atoms, so keep your three carbon atoms intact, which would mean an oxygen at the central carbon. And that would probably cyclize again to give you the epoxide moiety again. Remember that this oxygen would react with that carbon and exclude that chlorine atom. And once you have this moiety in there, the hydrazine would now react with this epoxide, which would mean that you add the hydrazine moiety to this particular structure. And you see I'm keeping my three carbon atoms in there. I've added the hydrazine to that particular carbon. And the central carbon still has the oxygen in it because this bond will break. And once you have that, you can recognize that you have your hydroxy group and the NH group that you see here, <coughs> which would give you a five-member drain, which is quite stable if you react that with dimethyl carbonate. Which would give you target molecule carbon atom attached to a five-membered ring of oxygen and nitrogen and on that nitrogen another amino group. 
questions. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and saw how we disconnected um, a slightly more complex molecule than what we've seen previously and the many steps that need to go into um, synthesizing a molecule like this.